Welcome back to Upside Down Art Studio. Um, today we're going to do a project that involves some painting. If you have watercolor paints, that's great. We are going to be using um, these ones like this. So if you have a tray of those, that's great. If you don't, you could use Kool-Aid. Um, you can actually use this and just water down a little bit. You don't need the whole packet, just a little bit of it, and you can water it down a little bit, and that will make a paint. If you have, Mary, you want to hand me some of those other things? Tea, that will work um, for your brown. If you have coffee, you can, you know, again, you don't need to use the whole thing, a little bit of it and a little bit of water, and you can make a little paint out of that. If you have just regular craft paints like this, you can also just take a little squirt of them, and we're going to be using a lot of water. We're going to be doing watercolor, so lots of water. So um, you won't need a whole lot of that. Some other things that we're going to use are salt. I know it sounds odd, but we're going to be using salt to do a watercolor effect. Um, and also, you want to grab those over there. We're going to be using some straws. Um, we're going to be blowing the paint around. Um, so if you have a straw from a fast food place or a pack of plastic straws, we have don't have any plastic ones right now, but we have these ones from water cups that we use. So we're just going to use those. You Visco girls might have a, um, what is it? A metal, metal straw, straw or a bendy straw. Just don't share your straws. You should be the only one putting your mouth on it and then make sure you wash it when you're done. Um, but that's the stuff you're going to need. Um, just computer paper again. If you have a thicker paper, that'd be great. But if not, that's okay. And then you might want a little bit of masking tape to tape it down while it's drying so it doesn't wrinkle. Um, but that's not necessary. That's just something extra you could do. Um, so we're going to be doing a spring painting we went for a walk yesterday and the girl the kids rode their bikes and we saw a lot of trees that were starting to get little buds on them so we thought this would be fun to do a little tree painting and we're gonna put some little buds on at the end too so get your supplies ready and we'll get started Don't touch my computer, okay we are rolling all right so the first thing you're gonna to want to do if you're using just your watercolor paints like this you're gonna to want to take a few drops of water in each one and stir it up um, watercolor paints are dry and so if you've got a tray like this you're going to have to add some water and a lot of times you think that they're empty or almost empty but once you get some water in there there's usually a lot more paint in there than you think so we're just kind of adding some drops and stirring it up and if your water um, cup you need a water cup next hey, to you Mom, I, I just use a little yogurt container. I need a different, um, I need a different, um, paintbrush. Okay. This, keep, this one keeps hair, uh, hairs keep falling. Okay, go get a different paintbrush. If you don't have a tray of watercolor paints like this and you're using the Kool-Aid or even this kind of Kool-Aid or even if you had food coloring dyes, you could use that, like I said, coffee or tea, just get yourself a little dish or a little saucer. Um, we like to also, I'm going to borrow this from Bubba for just a second, we also like to use these little, we feed, this is what our dog's food comes in. We use these for um, water containers and paint containers, um, putting, you know, stuff that comes, putting or um, Jello comes in, you can use those too, or just a plate or something. But anyways, um, just do the same thing. Take a little bit of your Kool-Aid, um, pour it on your dish or saucer or in a little cup or something, add a little bit of water to it um, until it starts to make like a liquidy paint like we've got on our tray here. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a wash. This is going to be our background, and you're going to need your salt for this. So I've got my salt, you can see right here on my tray. And we're going to go ahead and we're just going to get our paper kind of wet. And you just want to be careful that you don't scrub your paper. If you're doing this on a good table, this is our art table, so we don't, I mean, it's a mess. <laughs> so we don't really care if we get too much stuff on it. But you're going to get your paper just a little bit wet, not the whole thing. And then pick a color that you want for your background. And you're just going to kind of put that down. And you see how it's moving? Like, I'm not really doing anything. And I can even take more water. You just have to be careful that you don't scrub or rub your paper or you'll get a hole in it. But I'm just putting down some splashy water. I'm going to splash some green in here now. And I'm just kind of letting the water 
kind of push around. I'm just pushing the water. I'm not really rubbing the paper. I don't want to scrub or rub my paper. I'm just kind of letting, you can even just kind of dab it in there. But this technique is called a wet on wet painting technique where you've got your paper wet just with water first and then you just kind of push the colors around. And you don't want to overwork it because especially if you're using, like we're using computer paper, which is pretty thin. Um, if you had a thicker construction paper or if you had, um, they have special, wouldn't that neat? Look how so, that goes. So um, what am I supposed to be doing? Just wet it kind of lightly on the edges? It's not moving. Start in one corner. If it's not moving enough for you, that means that your paint's not watery enough. So just put some so normal So just put water some wa on. normal water on, yep and get it nice and liquidy so it's just kind of flowing around. And then get a color. And then get a color of your choice. And you know, you're gonna probably use two colors. I'm even gonna put, pop a little bit I'm of yellow in here. So I'm colors. gonna get like a limey green. Use your <gasps> what happened? I just, I forgot That's that. okay. Just take your wet paintbrush. She got some green in her yellow paint. So just take your paintbrush and kind of clean and that what up. What is what is what is supposed to happen when I put the to put the paint on the water? You should have a lot of water down first. Mm. So it's kind of puddly. Mm. Oh, and then you that. just kind of dot a little bit of your color in and it just kind of floats. It's almost like the paint is floating on top of the water and then you just kind of push it around. Um, do you like how I'm doing yeah. I'm outlining it with yellow. I like that. Now get some more water on there, Bubba. You want lots of water. And you'll probably have to go back and add more um, water to your paints too. Like my blue's getting kind of dry here and I'm going to use put some more in my water in my green too. You want them nice and runny. Time to get this paper wet, but now my So, my paintbrush is hardly touching my paper. My my paintbrush is really just touching the surface of the water and I'm just pushing the paint around the top of the surface of the water. Okay, now while this is still all what I say, it's juicy and wet, here you're gonna take a little juicy. salt. Yeah, it's kind of runny. Um, wherever it's puddly, you're gonna put your salt on. And what happens is, is the salt um, absorbs the moisture. And so I'm gonna get some little speckles on here, some little dots on here, almost like um, like it's raining outside. You'll get all these little dots on there once it starts to. Um, absorb. You can, I don't know if you can see in the camera or not, but this is starting, the salt starting to absorb my water because that's what salt does, but then the paint's in the water so it also absorbs the paint. So I'm going to get these little speckly dots on here once it's all dry. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to let that salt absorb all that and you're going to want to let your paper dry and then um, come back for step two. If you want to speed it up a little bit with a hairdryer, you can, but you got to hold the hairdryer away from the paper um, or else it, sometimes it can make your hair dryer stop. I don't know if it overheats or something, but I've had that happen before. So hold it away. Um, or you can just go do something else. Go do some of your homework and then come back. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, we have our pictures are dry. I did use the hair dryer a little bit to dry them off a little bit while the kids worked on some things. So I want to show you how they turned out. And then we're going to do step two. Okay, so first we're going to show you Bubba's. This is mine. Get in there, Bubba, so we can see you. Little, He's a little llama today. There's a little, there's little ducks. Yeah, yes, so I'm, let's get close. You can see where the salt was. There's where the salt absorbed Yes, the, I am a Fortnite llama. Yeah, the llama. I am totally a Fortnite you llama. You are. So that's what his salt is. Now, he's got some salt that didn't quite absorb, or if you've got some left yeah. over, you can just wipe that off, Bubba. Yeah, but okay, it kind of off. makes a pattern. I have and then here's Mary. Purple, blue, green, and then like a yellow. I want to blow all the salt off. Yeah, and look how pretty that blue. is. Can I blow so all this the works salt? really good. Um, yeah, just don't blow it off into anybody. Um, this works really good if you were doing like a galaxy and you wanted to have stars in the sky, or if yeah. you wanted to do like a snowy picture. Ours is going to be kind of a rainy, springy picture. And so here's Jonah's. He's just blowing the salt up of his right now. It's not even blowing it's off. It's turned out really good. And you can see there's some wrinkles in our paper, but that's okay. Um, we don't mind. We're not being perfect. Now, if you had a watercolor paper, it wouldn't do that if you taped it down on all four sides. But we're just using computer paper. We don't have any watercolor paper right now. 
Okay, so I'm going to turn this around so you can see the next step. You're going to need your straw and some brown paint or your coffee or tea. This is the good thing about me. Okay, so we're ready to start making our trees. And I'm going to go into my brown and get it nice and wet. And then I'm going to, going to get my black. So go ahead, um, put some water in your brown and black and get them really runny. And I'm going to need my straw for this. My water looks you. Thanks for saying that. <laughs> so our water got really dirty from using all the colors before, but that's okay because we're using brown now, so it's not going to matter. So you can change your water when you change colors, but we don't need to because we're, we're using brown and black. So I'm going to take some of my brown and my black, and I'm going to put a dot. And I want it to be um, a small dot, but I want it to be a fat dot. So you can see I've got a dot of brown and black here. And then if you watch what I'm going to do here, I'm going to move my chair. I'm actually going to get down here so I can get closer to my paper. And I'm just going to blow so that, and I'm going to, I don't want to just, if I blow too hard, it's just going to go spurt, but I want to make it go in the direction I want it to because this is going to be a tree. I think I might have to start over. And you can see I'm getting some branches going here, and then you can I, kind of blow I, off I, the I side. Start over. And so you'll see you get these little ones coming off of here. <gasps> And it doesn't have to be perfect, so don't fuss too much. Don't try to to overthink it. I'm going to put a little more down here. And I'm going to put a couple little dots up here, too, where I'm going to want some branches. And like I said, this is not a fussy painting. This is more of an abstract painting. I can't, Mom, I think I need to start over. I need to start over, Mom. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to keep adding on here, and I'm just going to keep fast. I'm going to fast forward this part so you guys can watch me. And I'm going to have to take some breaths in between here so I don't get lightheaded. So you also should. And then I'm also going to move the camera around so you can see what the kids are doing. All right, so there's Bubba getting some on there. You got a nice big trunk on your tree right there. So now you're going to want to put some more paint on there and get some branches. Can you put the some paint more on there so I can do it? Well, more? yeah. You want me to get a little on there for you? And then keep adding some more. Let's see how Mary's doing. Oh, that looks pretty. And like I said, these are just kind of um, abstract trees. They can be a little... Um, you okay for Jonah? <laughs> My perfectionist. Mm. Um, <laughs> oh, you get lightheaded? You take a break if you start to get lightheaded. That looks pretty. Good. So we're going to keep adding away here. And then we'll come back and show you in a little while. Okay, we are back and we are done with our tree branches now. I hope you had fun with that part. Hope you didn't get too dizzy. Now we're going to take a Q-tip and I forgot to tell you to get these at the beginning. You could just use your paintbrush if you wanted to, but I find that the Q-tip um, is nice, especially for younger kids because you get a nice perfect little dot. So we're going to put some, I'll show you how to use the brush and the Q-tip, but um, we're going to put some little buds on our tree. So you could use green, you could use yellow, but you could do any color you want. I mean, if you want to do purple, red, um, this is your art, so it doesn't have to be realist realistic. You can do it any way you want. But I think I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, and I'm just going to start to put little dots for little buds on my tree. And you can put as many on here as you want. If you 
go for a walk, today's kind of rainy, but if you go for a walk this week, um, you'll definitely see, you gotta look close on some of them, but on the trees, there's a lot of these little buds. I'm gonna do some green too. Um, they're just starting to appear, and pretty soon some of those will be popping and they'll turn into flowers, and some of them will eventually turn into leaves. And we've got a lot of little tulips and a lot of little um, flowers coming up out of the ground too. So if you take a walk, look close. Spring has sprung. It is definitely popping out everywhere. What does sprung mean? Sprung. It's like popped up. Oh. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to continue dotting these on. And yeah, we'll fast, fast forward it. We'll fast forward this part. I knew you were going to Now, if you wanted to, you could um, just use your paintbrush. So, a nice um, pointy paintbrush works good. If you didn't want to use a Q-tip, you could just use your paintbrush to do little dots. It takes a little more control to do with the paintbrush because you don't want to push the paintbrush down all the way. You just want to use the tippy tip so that you get the little dots. If you push it down all the way, you're going to get like a smushy or like an oval shape which is cool for other techniques. But for this one, it's um, it's like pointillism. So if you've done impressionism with me before, some of you have, we um, talked about pointillism, one of our impressionist techniques. And we're just using the tip of the brush. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this camera around in a minute and we'll show you the other ones. So I'm gonna... All right, so there is my finished design. Here's my Bobby's. Because the, ooh, because Bobby's the, almost looks kind of fallish, like a fall well, look tree. Look at the design I did on my thing. And Mary's, ooh, very pretty. Yours looks like it has berries on it. Yeah. Yeah. And then Jonah's. Oh, very nice, Jonah. Take the tape off. All right, so I hope you guys had fun with this lesson and get outside and enjoy some spring. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.